Sheen Shots. Yeah, boy. Welcome back to Sheen Shots, everybody. Today we will be taking a look at possibly the coolest and most powerful skill tree in all of Outward. The Rune Sage. There's going to be no point in using this skill tree if you don't have any mana, since each skill requires some amount of it. Additionally, you will need to hold a lexicon or rune book in your left hand in order to cast the skills. Lexicons can be purchased from most mage merchants, so don't worry, they're everywhere. To find False, the Rune Sage trainer, travel to Berg in the Enmerker Forest. He can be found up the stairs in the very back of town. His selection of skills are possibly the most complex to use in the game, but this is only because there's no given guide on how to use them. The tier 1 skills he has available are Rune Dez, Rune Egoth, Rune Fall, and Rune Shim. Or if you're a normal person like me, he has runes colored blue, purple, green, and red. Individually, these runes do absolutely nothing. However, they give you powerful abilities if combined in the correct order. The following combinations result in the following abilities. Blue plus purple will give you runic protection. Red plus purple will give you a runic blade. Green plus blue will give you a runic lantern. Red plus green will give you a runic trap. Runic protection grants the user plus 15 physical resistance as well as plus 2 protection. It is extremely useful for any build because you can take more hits before dying. Although most tanky builds and mage builds will find the most use for it. Tank builds need as much re damage reduction as they can get. And mage builds can very easily use the skills due to the extra amount of mana they have to acquire. Runic Blade summons a runic sword that lasts 180 seconds. Essentially this gives you a sword that deals pure ethereal damage. Since very few enemies have any resistance to ethereal, it gives you the 1-up in almost every single fight. In total, the blade does 28 ethereal damage and 12 impact. The timer on the blade might worry players, but as long as you can cast the runes right before a fight or during, it will last plenty of time. This also eliminates extra weight of swords if you ever have to unequip your weapon. Next up we have the Runic Lantern. This ability is simply a hands-free lantern that lasts 300 seconds. This eliminates the need for lanterns since it can regularly be cast and is, in my opinion, the brightest light source in the game. You can now use that brigand's backpack but still have a light source. Lastly, we have the Runic Trap. This is probably the most potent of the Rune Sage skills. Casting this combination will place a purple X directly in front of where your character is standing. It will stay until either an enemy walks into it, or you place another one. It deals a massive 70 ethereal damage and a whopping 150 impact. It is great for dealing damage without being in harm's way, as well as being much faster to assemble than physical traps. Magic casters would make the most use of this skill, because if you want to use it a lot, then you will need significant mana to do so. The only downside is that only one trap can be placed at a time. However, this makes complete sense, since if you could spam a hundred of them on the ground and kill everything in half a second, that'd be a little overpowered. The tier 2 skill this trainer offers is called Well of Mana. You will need to spend a skill point to get this skill since it is a tier 2. Well of Mana increases your maximum mana by 40. This is a pretty significant skill because acquiring mana takes away some of your health and stamina. You can't max out mana without breaking your character. This passive skill gives you an enormous amount of extra mana that will help you use more before having to restore it. The next three skills are all passives and cannot be obtained unless you buy Well of Mana first. Arcane Syntax is the first tier 3 skill available in this tree. It gives the simple description, gain access to more advanced runic combos, which is not very descriptive. What this passive skill does is give you additional combinations you can make with the runes. It is important to note that all the additional combinations must be added to a previous combo. For example, you will need to have Runic Protection currently active to cast Runic Heal. The combinations are as follows. Runic Protection plus Purple plus Blue equals Runic Heal. Runic Blade plus Red plus Purple equals Great Runic Blade. Runic Lantern plus Green plus Red equals Runic Lightning. Runic Trap plus Red plus Red equals Runic Detonation. 
Runic Heal makes health potions almost completely obsolete. Casting this restores 40 health upon your character. You will lose the protection in this process, but you can then cast it again right after. 40 health is quite a bit of health, and this gives you even more room since there won't be any more health potions in your backpack. Great Runic Blade is exactly what it sounds like. You exchange your one-handed sword for a two-handed mana blade of death. This blade also lasts 180 seconds, but does 39 ethereal damage and 19 impact. It is a great heavy weapon that does massive damage to almost every enemy. The only downside to this blade is that casting it will unequip your lexicon. You can always re-equip it from your inventory, but it does slow you down a bit in a lengthy battle. Runic Lightning is by far the best addition to the Runic combinations. This cast shoots a lightning ball out from your ball of light and does 55 lightning damage with 30 impact. It's an extremely long range skill that has a pretty far drop off point. You can circle your enemies while blasting them back to hell all from a comfortable distance. This skill is also super convenient to use since the lantern ability it combos off of lasts 5 whole minutes. You definitely won't run out of this in a fight. The runic detonation is a massive explosion that can be activated when an enemy comes near your trap. You press the red rune twice with a trap on the ground and it will explode hitting enemies within range. Your damage bonuses do stack with this explosion unlike the regular runic trap. Essentially it is possible to one shot plenty of enemies if timed correctly. Basically boom bomb gets a bigger boom. Finally we are at the last two skills this tree offers. Here, you must make a choice between the two of them. Once you buy the left skill, the right one will be unavailable and vice versa. Internalized Lexicon is the passive skill on the left and is the more simple of the two. This lets you use runes without a lexicon. You can now hold a chakram, lantern, or torch in the other hand rather than that lexicon. It can also help you if you go for the two-handed mana sword since there will be nothing to unequip. While this skill sounds great, it is massively dwarfed by its cohort. Runic Prefix is insanely better. Only use Internalized Lexicon if absolutely necessary for your build. The following buffs are given to the different Runic combos if Runic Prefix is chosen. Runic Blade will gain Divine Light Imbue, giving it lightning damage as well as a pretty high light source. Great Runic Blade will gain Decay Damage for the same duration that that blade is equipped. Runic Protection gains plus five physical resistance, another protection, and plus 10 resistance to all elements. Runic Heal allows you to recover an extra two health per second, lasts for 10 seconds. Runic Lantern will last an additional 150 seconds. Runic Lightning will gain plus 10 lightning damage, and the explosion can now light a campfire. Runic Trap gains 30 decay damage, Runic Detonation will now stack 40 Decay Damage. The Runic Prefix skill boosts every rune combo significantly and allows you to get much more damage out of each attack. For this reason, I always choose Runic Prefix over Internalized Lexicon. But you never know when that free hand could come in handy, so keep an open mind when choosing your path. All in all, the Rune Sage is a very fun and very powerful skill tree to play with. You get plenty of unique abilities and it is pretty easy to memorize the combos after using them for just a bit. I recommend going with the same setup I used with colors in order from red, green, to then blue and purple. I found this to be the easiest way to remember the combinations. You can also write them down on a sticky note if you're having a hard time with them. Go ahead and try out this skill if you haven't and don't forget to subscribe to see all kinds of cool abilities that Outward has to offer. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.